Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we will talk about the article that was assigned to us. But before that, let's know about the brief history of Greenland. So Greenland is an island country that is part of the Kingdom of Denmark. It is located between the Arctic and Atlantic Oceans, east of the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. Greenland's major physical feature is its massive ice sheet, which is second only to Antarctica's in size. So the Greenland ice sheet has the average thickness of 5,000 feet, reaches a maximum thickness of about 10,000 feet, and covers more than 700,000 square miles, over four-fifths of the Greenland total land area. So the capital of Greenland is called Nuuk, and the Greenland have the total area of 2.166 million square kilometer, and according to the World Bank, in the year 2020, Greenland has a total population of 56,367, and the Greenland is under the continent of North America with their currency, Danish Krone, and official language, Greenland. And for the Greenland's history, the Inuit are believed to have crossed the Northeast Greenland from North America using the islands of the Canadian Arctic as stepping stones in a series of migration that stretch from at least 2500 BCE to the early 2nd millennium CE. So each wave of migration represented different Inuit cultures. Several distinct cultures are known including those classified as Independence 1, Sakak, Independence 2, Dorset 1, and Dorset 2. And the most recent arrival was the Tolly culture, from which the Inukso culture developed during the 12th and 13th centuries. In 982, the Norwegian Eric the Red, who had been banished from Iceland for months later, settled on the island today known as Greenland. And in 11th century, Christianity arrived in Greenland by way of Eriksson, Leif Eriksson, who had just returned from recently Christianized Norway. Beginning sometime in the 13th century, the Norse settlers, or the Scandinavian, began to interact with the expanded Inuit Tolly culture that had appeared in northern Greenland about 1,100. But in the 14th century, the Norse settlements declined perhaps as a result of the cooling in Greenland's climate. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Dutch and English whalers frequently traveled in the seas around Greenland, and occasionally they interacted with the local population. However, no further attempt at colonization was made until 1721, when Hans Hagedi, with the permission of the United Kingdom of Denmark, Norway, founded a trading company and a Lutheran mission near present-day Nuuk, thus marking the real beginning of Greenland's colonial era. In 1776, the Danish government assumed the full monopoly of trade with Greenland, and the Greenland coast was close to foreign access. It was not reopened until 1950. So during this period, Denmark tried gradually to acclimatize the Greenlanders to the outside world without exposing them to the danger of economic exploitation. Later on, Greenland fell under the protection of the United States during the German occupation of Denmark in World War II and was returned to Denmark in 1945. Following the war, Denmark responded to Greenlanders' complaints over its administration of the island. The monopoly of the Royal Greenland Trading Company was abolished in 1951, and after Greenland became an integral part of the Kingdom of Denmark in 1953, Reforms were undertaken to improve the local economy, transportation systems, and the educational systems. In 1979, the Danish government granted home rule to Greenland, and under this agreement, Greenland remained part of the Danish realm, and each Greenlander was a Danish citizen, enjoying equal rights with all other Danes. Denmark retained control of the island constitutional affairs, foreign relations and defense while Greenland maintained jurisdiction over economic development, municipal regulation, taxes, education, and social welfare systems, cultural affairs, and the state church. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, scientists posited that global warming was profoundly affecting not only Greenland's climate but also its physical geography. A number of scientists noted that Greenland's vast ice sheet was shrinking at a highly increased rate. To continue, we have teacher Carmina to talk about the article 
major sea level rise caused by melting of Greenland ice cap is now inevitable. The major sea level rise caused by melting of Greenland ice cap is now inevitable. Climate change is having a significant impact on Greenland, where summers have increased longer over the last several decades and glaciers in the Greenland ice cap have accelerated their retreat. Scientists have discovered that major sea level rise from the melting of the Greenland ice sheet is now unavoidable, even if the fossil fuel burning that is causing the climate catastrophe were to stop overnight. According to an article by Carrington and Environment Editor, research finds global warming to date will result in an absolute minimum sea level rise of 27 centimeters from Greenland alone as 110 tons of ice melt. With increased carbon emissions, melting of additional ice caps, and ocean thermal expansion, a multimeter rise in sea level looks imminent. Flooding caused by increasing sea levels is one of the most serious long-term consequences of the climate problem affecting billions of people, and the Greenland ice sheet is currently the main factor in swelling the Earth's ocean according to NASA, with the Arctic region heating at a faster rate than the rest of the planet. If Greenland's record melt year of 2012 becomes a regular occurrence later this century, as is probable, the ice cap will cause a staggering 78 centimeters rise in sea level according to the experts. Mountain glaciers in the Himalayas and the Alps are already on course to lose a third and half of their ice respectively, while the West Antarctic ice sheet is also thought by some scientists to be past the point at which major losses are inevitable. Warming oceans also expand, adding to sea level rise. And now to give more information about this issue or this topic, and for us to be more knowledgeable about this, I present to you Teacher Carleen Varkes. An IPCC report assumed that the Greenland ice sheet would contribute an estimated maximum of 18 centimeters to sea level rise by 2100 under the highest emission scenario. However, the new measurements suggest that a sea level rise of at least 27 centimeters and possibly as much as 78 centimeters is more likely. NASA sea level projections still display possible future sea levels under several greenhouse gas emission and socioeconomic scenarios. A future with low emissions that keeps global warming to 1.5 degrees, a business as usual, trajectory with emissions continuing on their current course and a predicted global warming of 2 to 4 degrees above pre-industrial level by the end of the century and an accelerated emission scenario with temperatures well above 4 degrees. For instance, if mankind cuts back on greenhouse gas emissions, sea level rise due to climate change will be less of an issue. A high emissions projections would lead to warming of over 4 degrees, enough for Greenland's ice sheet to melt completely, which would cause sea levels to rise globally by more than 200 centimeters. The scientist's website writes, Coastlines will continue to reshape over millennia, affecting at least 25 megacities and drowning low-lying areas. Increased flooding risk, beach erosions, habitat loss for animals and plants living on or near the shore. And the displacements of an estimated 267 million people worldwide are all potential effects of rising sea levels. Effects of melting ice caps in Greenland to globalization. First, natural resources will be affected. With the melting of ice caps in Greenland, it contributes to the rising of sea level. With that being said, most location that is rich in natural resources would be likely submerged in water, thus diminishing our source of natural resources. The natural resources that would be likely be affected by this are oil and gas. Second, affected livelihood. This would also take effect with the melting of ice caps. The rising of sea level affects businesses and livelihood near coastal areas, especially fishermen. The warmer water or changes of water temperature, changes of water current, increased acidity are some factors where fishes tend to change place to look for another habitat. And the third one, companies or businesses will be forced to close. Due to the rising of sea level, some businesses or companies would likely be forced to close their businesses because their location might be totally submerged in seawater. 
or it could also be that their location is not effective anymore to catch some customer, thus bankruptcy. Drastic changes in landscape. With the changes of landscape due to rise of sea level, the trading routes through land would also change, thus there will have some delays in exchange of goods like imports and exports. Though trading would be possible, it would still make delays and changes and needs to adopt with the new setting. Changes of maritime trade route. Due to change of sea current and some ports may be submerged in seawater, the maritime trading route would likely be changed and this would also contribute to delay of goods, local or international, both imports and ex exports.